Hi, I'm Jeff Murrah, and I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today I'm going to be discussing the surrender of San Antonio, which happened on this day, February 16th, 1861. Um, okay, if you have been tuning into uh, the videos, you'll know that I had talked about the secession convention and what happened. Um, they had a, uh, one of the things the convention did was set up what they called a committee of public safety. Now the committee of public safety, uh, these men, uh, carried on correspondence with, uh, the military commanders at the various forts around Texas. Uh, because when Texas decided to reassert its sovereignty, uh, that means that all the forts and means of uh, self-protection uh, would need to be turned over as well. And uh, the biggest concentration of military force at that time uh, was in San Antonio. San Antonio was essentially uh, the military center of Texas. And uh, so there was pressure put on the U.S. commander uh, at that point, who was uh, David Twiggs. And uh, the Committee of Public Safety directed Colonel Ben McCullough to uh, effect uh, the surrender and turning over of the uh, federal forces and Ford at that time now. The Alamo was uh, more than symbolic at that point. Uh, it was also uh, the military headquarters of the United States uh, in Texas at that time. And uh, McCullough went there uh, with his men. Uh, he had many volunteers. He had about 650 uh, men, whereas Twiggs had about 160. Uh, and... Uh, McCullough went ahead and demanded Twig surrender. Now, uh, the surrender had already been uh, pretty much negotiated uh, prior to that time. Twiggs was in a bind because he did not want there to be bloodshed. Uh, he wanted things to go smoothly. Um, now, the way McCullough went about doing it, um, it essentially made a big show, big production, high drama, uh, that Twiggs raised some questions about. He considered it uh, disrespectful and dishonorable uh, the way he went about uh, demanding a surrender in such a public upfront way. Uh, now, Twiggs was later reprimanded by the United States government for uh, treason to the flag. Um, and uh, it, it caused uh, quite a big stink. Uh, but the fort was turned over. There was no loss of life. The, many of the other forts uh, were also uh, turned over when uh, the demand was put to them uh, to do so. Now, it is awfully ironic that uh, that afternoon, after the surrender happened, a uh, stagecoach arrived in town, uh, and who else is on the stagecoach but none other than Robert E. Lee. And Robert E. Lee on arriving uh, was puzzled by the lack of the United States flag flying uh, above the facility and he wanted to know uh, you know what happened and his phrase uh, that he asked has it so soon come to this I mean people had been talking about uh, secession and the split up of the Union and uh, this is not something that uh, Robert E. Lee and the military people uh, were looking forward to. Um, they had hoped to avoid this at all costs, and now it was there in Lee's lap. Uh, and if you know anything about his uh, story, uh, he spent several restless nights deciding uh, what course of action he was going to take. But uh, he was supposed to come over and start taking over uh, command of some of the facilities here in Texas uh, had not this happened. Um, but this is the anniversary of uh, that event. Let's see, and how did, let's see, what's Twig's actual phrase? Uh, 
Twix told Ben McCullough, Ben McCulloch, you've treated me shamefully, ruining my reputation as a military commander, and I am too old to reestablish that. And McCullough replied, I am serving my state, the state of Texas, sir. So um, each man was very firm uh, in uh, what they saw as their duty and their responsibility. Uh, and it came to some unpleasant situations, but they managed to uh, find a, excuse me, no bloodshed way of moving past that. But that's what happened this day, February 16th, 1861. Um, now, the other thing that was going on uh, in the background, many of the U.S. soldiers started moving toward uh, the area of Texas known as Green Lake. And later on, there was going to be a little bit of a military engagement there where uh, Earl Van Dorn uh, kicks it up with some of the uh, troops there. And uh, there was some gunfire uh, associated with the takeover of Fort Brown as well down, on the, down in the valley. But until next time, this is Jeff Mara uh, wishing you via con Dios, my friends. Hope that you stay warm because uh, throughout Texas, uh, things are cold. In fact, uh, here this morning, woke up and we didn't have any water. That's uh, why I don't look all fresh and bouncy today. But anyways, I wish you well, and uh, we'll keep you posted on events in Texas history. Till then, 